Welcome to a screencast on vapor pressure lowering. The objectives of this screencast are to describe the effect of solute concentration on the vapor pressure of a solution, to explain the reasons for vapor pressure lowering, to perform calculations involving vapor pressure lowering, and to explain applications of this colligative property. Now, if you have a pure liquid, a pure solvent, uh, typically that's going to have what's known as a vapor pressure. Some of the molecules of the liquid have enough energy to overcome their intermolecular forces and to exist in the gas phase. Uh, if we have an open container, these molecules can escape and then be replaced by other molecules. If we have a closed container, an equilibrium is reached where there is a constant pressure due to these gas molecules and at a given temperature uh, the fraction of the molecules that has enough energy to become gas is uh, constant for a given uh, substance. Now if instead of a pure liquid, a pure solvent, we have a solution then we have a smaller concentration of solvent molecules. They're not 100% solvent. Maybe 95% of the molecules might be solvent molecules. Therefore, we have a smaller number or smaller fraction of the solution molecules that can escape to become gas. Now here again, as usual, we're assuming our solute is a non-volatile solute. In other words, it does not turn into a gas. And because we have a smaller uh, uh, fraction of the total molecules that can become gas, that are the solvent molecules that are volatile, then we have uh, a lesser amount of molecules escaping, smaller fraction, and we have a smaller pressure of that gas. In general, the vapor pressure curve for a uh, pure solvent looks something like this. It's this uh, curved line increasing as temperature increases, the vapor pressure increases. It's not linear, it's kind of an exponential increasing. Uh, at any given temperature, there's a, uh, a specific vapor pressure for that uh, particular liquid or solvent. Now, if we have a solution with that solvent, at every location, the vapor pressure of the solution will be lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. And by location here, I'm talking about for a given temperature. So any temperature we're at, whatever the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, uh, because the argument uh, just discussed, the vapor pressure of the solution is lower. So that's a generally true statement. When you add a non-volatile solute to a solvent, the vapor pressure decreases. It's going to decrease more if we have a higher concentration of solute particles. It's going to decrease less if we have a lower concentration of solute particles. So in general, what's also true is the amount of vapor pressure lowering is proportional to or depends upon the concentration. Now the mathematical relationship for this what's known as vapor pressure lowering is given by the following equation. The vapor pressure of a solution is equal to the vapor pressure of the pure solvent times the mole fraction of the solvent. And we've done mole fraction or dealt with it before. Recall that mole fraction, uh, in this case mole fraction of the solvent, is the moles of solvent divided by the total moles, which in this case is the moles of solvent plus the moles of solute. So again, uh, mole fraction is a fraction on the basis of moles, and here we're dealing with the mole fraction of the solvent. Uh, this relationship is known as Rhodes Law. Graphically, we can also describe Rhodes Law or the vapor pressure lowering relationship. Uh, here is a graph showing mole fraction of solvent. And remember, mole fraction can range from 0 to 1. It can be uh, have no solvent molecules or 100% solvent molecules and everything else in between. Uh, here, the vapor pressure of the pure solvent at a, whatever temperature we are, happen to be dealing with, that corresponds to a mole fraction of 1 for the solvent. It's pure solvent. 
Uh, and here let's uh, represent amount of solvent by red and amount of solute by um, yellow. And at the one uh, mole fraction for the solvent, we have 100% solvent and the vapor pressure is just simply due to the solvent. Now, if we decrease the uh, amount of solvent by adding some solute, let's say we go down to 75% solvent or a mole fraction of 0.75, then 75% of the molecules are solvent, 25% of them are solute, and the vapor pressure is 75% of the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. Similarly, with 50% solvent, we get 50% of the vapor pressure, 25% solvent, we get 25% of the vapor pressure, and of course, if we had no solvent at all, it's only non-volatile solute, our vapor pressure is zero. So there's the graphical relationship, corresponds to the mathematical statement of Raoult's law uh, we saw previously, and let's try a question involving vapor pressure lowering. So this question is, what's the vapor pressure of an aqueous 0 0.500 molal NaCl solution at 100 degrees Celsius? Okay, well, let's think about what's going on and see how we would solve this problem. At 100 degrees Celsius, if we have an aqueous solution, well, aqueous means water, so if we had pure water, which is our solvent, what we know is that at 100 degrees that will boil. Now, boiling requires the vapor pressure of the um, liquid, in this case water, to equal the external atmospheric pressure. And at sea level, where water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, the atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere, or 760 torr. So the vapor pressure of water at 100 degrees Celsius is one atmosphere. Um, in general, vapor pressure at some other temperature is a value we'd have to look up, but in this case, we can deduce what it is because we know the boiling point of water and we know what's required in terms of vapor pressure for water to boil. Um, now to do our calculation, we expect the vapor pressure of the aqueous solution to be lower than that, to be lower than one atmosphere, and the mathematical relationship is Raoult's law so we can calculate the vapor pressure of the solution if we know the vapor pressure of pure water at this temperature, which we just talked about, and if we know the mole fraction of water at that, uh, uh, under these circumstances, which we can figure out. Uh, recall again that mole fraction in this case is moles of water because that's our solvent divided by moles of water plus moles of NaCl because NaCl is our solute. Okay, well we have a 0.5 molal NaCl solution. How do we get the mole fraction from that? Well, what does 0.5 molal mean? It's 0.5 moles of solute NaCl dissolved in one kilogram of solvent H2O. So let's use that as our amount. We'll just pick those amounts for convenience any ratio that's the same will give us the same result, but this is the most convenient starting point. And um, 0.5 moles of NaCl, remember that NaCl is uh, a soluble ionic compound. NaCl dissociates into Na plus and Cl minus when it dissolves in water. So it has a Van't Hoff factor or an I of two. And that means if we have 0.5 moles of NaCl, we actually have one or twice 0.5 moles, uh, we have one mole of actual solute particles. And then one kilogram of H2O, of course, is a thousand grams of H2O. And using the molar mass of H2O, it should be fairly simple to show that that's equal to 55.5 moles of H2O. So we now have the moles of solute and the moles of water. We're at 100 degrees Celsius, and as previously discussed, that means that the vapor pressure of water will be one atmosphere. So we can plug in one atmosphere for the vapor pressure of water at 100 degrees Celsius. 
we can plug in the moles of H2O, 55.5, divided by the moles of H2O plus the moles of NaCl, 55.5 plus 1. Note here that moles will cancel moles, leaving only atmospheres, which is good for a pressure. And we get 0.982 atm, which is a little bit less than uh, 1 atm, which is what would be expected for a solution where the vapor pressure is lower compared to the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. Now, of course, other problems uh, involving vapor pressure lowering might be more challenging. Um, we might need to solve for, we might be given vapor pressure solution, solve for vapor pressure of uh, the solvent at that time. We might, in fact, even uh, need to solve for moles of, say, solute. Uh, and again, if you have enough information um, and you do the appropriate math, you can uh, use uh, Raoult's law and the concept of vapor pressure lowering to uh, solve a variety of problems involving these same concepts. Okay, now one other thing is, uh, so far we've seen three colligative properties, boiling point elevation, freezing point depression, and now vapor pressure lowering. We didn't really describe the, or, or give the reasons for why boiling points were elevated and freezing points were uh, lowered when the solution is made. And now having discussed the reasons for vapor pressure lowering for a solution, we can uh, give a little bit of the rationale for boiling point elevation and freezing point depression. This is a phase diagram. Uh, specifically, it's actually a phase diagram of water. We've seen these before. And in fact, we just saw part of the phase diagram, this liquid gas or vapor pressure curve, this liquid gas equilibrium curve. And uh, we specifically dealt with the notion or fact that at 100 degrees Celsius, water boils because its vapor pressure is one atmosphere, which equals atmospheric pressure at sea level. And if we were at a lower atmospheric pressure, then uh, we would boil, water would boil at a lower temperature. And if we had a higher external pressure, water would boil at a higher temperature. Now, if we uh, are dealing with our pure solvent, in this case water, and we then uh, look at what its boiling point would be, it's going to correspond to, uh, for any given conditions, a pressure and temperature point on this line, like the one we just talked about, the normal boiling point, of water. Now if we have a solution, of course, the vapor pressure curve is lower for the solution than it is for the solvent. Because the vapor pressure curve is lower, what that means is the vapor pressure curve for the solution is also farther to the right, if you will, uh, than it is for the pure solvent. And so to get water, sorry, to get the solution to boil, it also has to have a vapor pressure equal to external atmospheric pressure. And so if we're dealing with the normal boiling point of the solution, it's going to be significant, well, at least somewhat, higher than the boiling point of the pure solvent because the vapor pressure curve was shifted downward slash to the right. That amount, uh, a difference in temperature, is the amount of Free, uh, sorry, of boiling point elevation. It depends upon concentration, and that part we've talked about before. But now, basically, we can say that the reason for boiling point elevation is really because of uh, vapor pressure lowering when a solution is formed. So, in general, the boiling point of solution is higher than the boiling point of the solvent. Uh, we've talked about that, and now we've talked about the reasons for it. Um, one can make somewhat similar arguments or a little bit different, but uh, when we deal with freezing point, in this case, uh, again, for water, the freezing point of pure water would be shown here on the phase diagram. And the um, solid liquid curve is shifted not to the right and downward, but in this case, to the left and downward. For the solution, that makes the freezing point of the solution farther to the left or lower in temperature than the freezing point of the pure solvent. And the freezing point of the solution is lower than the freezing point of the solvent for 
somewhat similar reasons to why the boiling point is eleva elevated. It's a little bit more of a sophisticated argument, and uh, I think for this one we're going to leave it at that. Uh, a more detailed explanation of the boiling point elevation and a little bit of a hand wavy explanation of the freezing point depression. And that is it for vapor pressure lowering.